April the 26th, 2020, Los Angeles, California. Dearest mother, it's day whatever of quarantine. I lost track of the days. Staying at home has made everything blur together. I feel like I've lost all concept of time. The hours coming and going. I can't tell you the difference from a Monday to a Sunday. Just another Tuesday, I guess. Only every day is Tuesday. We've made a squirrel friend. He comes right up to you looking for his nuts. Clearly violating social distancing guidelines. Jerk. The cats make sure he remembers. We're doing our best with this new normal. Washing our hands, disinfecting our shoes, even wiping down the groceries. It's annoying, but at least it's something. Though we are running low on entertainment. There's only so much Netflix you can binge. I've gone through the office three times already. I'm just so bored. Your dearest son, David. P.S. Yes, I am not wearing pants. Good morning, good evening, good whatever it may be, cause time? What's that? Hope you guys are doing well with all the crazy going on. It's definitely been surreal. The LA highways are usable, the air is clear, the highways are usable, there's free delivery, the LA highways are actually usable. Seriously, being told it's faster to take the 101 during rush hour goes against every fiber in my being. The prophecies of Clueless are true. And there's nowhere to go. Is this what the Twilight Zone is like? Cause I hate it. But in all seriousness, I hope you guys are keeping safe, washing your hands, staying the f indoors, and finding the best ways to handle all this way too much free time. I mean, how much Netflix have you binged? Be honest, how much Netflix have you binged? I've been doing my favorite pastime, procrastinating on everything. It's not like I have anything to pass the time. Nope, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not one thing. Nada! But hey, maybe you need to add a little variety like finally reading or listening to that audiobook you keep overlooking. But aren't all the libraries closed? And for reasons, you find yourself not really wanting to pay $15 a month for Audible, let alone a physical book. Well, what if I told you there's a free option to do that while supporting your community and can all be done through your smartphone? So let me tell you about Libby. Quickly though, no, this is not a sponsorship. I'm way too insignificant for that. I just want to talk about this app because I think it's a very useful tool that you can use right away because it's so, so easy to use. I'll leave links to it down in the doobly-doo, but what even is Libby in the first place? To put it simply, Libby is a user-friendly app that connects you with your library's ebook and audiobook catalog. Huh, that was a quick video. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Actually, there's a little more to it. Libby was developed by Overdrive, a company focused on converting analog media into digital formats. Originally for floppies and CDs, they became a digital service for libraries with the rise of the internet and e-readers. They are actually the global leader with well over 45,000 libraries and schools in their network, and in 2015 became a subsidiary for Rakuten, which I only bring up because this is the same company that makes Kobo. You know, Kobo, the red-headed stepchild of e-readers, the Borders e-reader, AKA my childhood, AKA the best bookstore in the world. I don't care what people say, you were better than Barnes and Noble. I completely lost track of this video. F in chat for Borders. Did I really just say all that just to say I love Borders? Anyway, most libraries use Overdrive to distribute their digital catalog. You can even borrow directly from their website, but Libby is the user-friendly way with its clean design and simple process to get you right into your next favorite book. And it isn't hard when you got a library card. Arthur, remember Arthur? Stay on track, boy. Like I said, Libby is available for both iOS and Android devices. Links in the doobly-doo. When you open the app, you'll be asked to search for your library by name, city, or zip code. Then just put in your library card information and that's it. You're ready to browse and borrow at your leisure. Even check out samples before borrowing them. 
you can then read or listen inside the Libby app or have it transferred to your Kindle, which is US only, or any Adobe compatible e-reader. Like Kobo! Though I don't see why you would transfer when Libby has everything you need. Navigation is very simple. Once you borrow through the library, you can access the book through your shelf or this circle in the middle, which is a quick link to your latest read. Libby keeps track of your progress with a general menu showing how far you are when you open a book. Simply press anywhere to hide it and swipe to turn the pages. When you're done, just press in the center to bring back the menu and hit back or close the app. It keeps track either way. In the book, you can bookmark pages, jump to chapters, search for words, and change your reading settings in the reading settings. Pretty obvious right there where you can play with text size, light and dark mode, as well as fonts to get it to your liking. Encounter a word you don't understand? No problem. Just press and hold on the word to highlight it and click define to learn what it means. You can also highlight passages and take notes by holding and dragging. If you're that kind of monster. At least you aren't destroying books. Yeah, I went there. What you gonna do about it? Did I also mention there are no late fees? I repeat, there are no late fees. Since Libby keeps track on all your loans, when it's due, Libby simply takes it off your phone, sending you a notification before you want to renew or get in some cram reading. There are other little features like preferences while searching, syncing between devices and downloading, but at this point, I'm sure you're wondering. This sounds all fine and good, David, but what's the catch? Well, the big one would be availability. See, while a library has a lot of books, they don't have all the books or an infinite supply of a book. You are limited to what is on your library's catalog. So if it's not there, it's not there. Or all the copies have been checked out, which mean you're going to have to place a hold till a copy becomes available, which if you click on the calendar icon, will show you how long it will be from just a few weeks to several months. Though, if you're lucky, Libby does offer what they call skip the line copies, which are reserved copies you can borrow right away under certain restrictions from shorter loan times and no renewals. Basically, while it's digital, it's still a library. But who said you could only sign up to one library? So, let me present you with an example. I use libraries all the time. And out here, I mainly use the LA system since it's the biggest in the area. But I live next to two others, Burbank and Glendale, which sometimes have books LA doesn't have or copies available. I have library cards for all of them and Libby allows me to link them all to my account. And again, it's really that simple. I've already got LA and Burbank set up, but I haven't done Glendale yet. So let me show you. Just click on the icon at the top right corner and click add a library. We're going to type in Glendale and find our system. Let's see, uh, here we go. Which will take us to its front page. Scroll down to enter library account details and enter your info like before. Let's make sure we don't show that, please, at any me. Thank you. And... Boom. We're all set. Which is all cool and dandy, but now I bet y'all are thinking, David, I don't have a library card. I'm unable to get one because, you know. Plus, why do you have an Ohio library on your account? Well, fret not, because Libby is able to sign you up for a digital library card just by using your phone number. It cross-references your number with the library's database and will give you one if it's eligible. So, using me again, I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Duh. And my phone number is still tied back there, which I used already for one. But there is one more I can sign up to. So doing like we did before, add a library. This time we're gonna add in our zip, but we're not gonna show that. Go to the front page, but now we're going to click use my phone number. Definitely don't show that. And, oh, security code. And, oh, first and last name. <sighs> Email address, okay, this is a little more than I expected. <laughs> Again, not going to show that. And, 
Oh. I guess I'm not eligible for that one. <laughs> Hey, Editing David here. So, turns out my camera died right at that moment, and I guess it somehow took out my mic. So, everything here sounds awful and unscripted and messy. So, you know, this is why I write scripts, kids. So, yeah, I did not expect that to happen. I guess because I already used my phone number, it would not allow me to do it. So, but my point still stands. Just by doing all that, I can now switch between four different library branches to help me find any books that I can't find anywhere else. Honestly, this whole app is just generally amazing, and that's coming from someone who is not a big e-reader. I'm the kind of guy who just loves physical books. I love holding books, turning the page, the smell. I know it's weird, but books have a smell, don't judge. But I did find myself needing to use Libby, which is why this video even exists. After my video about buying no more books and reading down my pile, I decided to read Temple of the Wind, which is part of Terry Goodkind's Sword of Truth series. I remember enjoying the series back in high school, but I dropped off, leaving this book to collect dust. So I decided to read it both to finally get it out of the way, but also I was heading home to Cleveland where I could leave it with the rest of the series. Only, I forgot how long these books are. And I mean long. Temple of the Wind is over 800 pages and I was nowhere near finished when it came time for me to leave. I didn't want to bring the book back with me and remembering I had Libby on my phone, rented it and that's how I discovered how good the app really is. Wish I could say the same about the book. I can't even begin to explain the what the hell trip that is this book. Why did you like this series, High School Me? Cause, wow. Why did I choose to read this now? The plot is about people fighting a magic plague. Boy, isn't that just timely. Cause nothing says escapism like reading how a good fascist faces a pandemic. There is a lot to unpack there. Temple of the Wind? More like Temple of the Long-Winded Exposition. Got him. I swear a third of this book is just characters talking to other characters about what we just read. So much repetition of information. It's not every day you read a book that has the line, look at that boy's penis and a subplot about someone Jack the Rippering women and it being very obvious who it is. I really should do a video about the Sword of Truth series and Terry Goodkind just being a lot, but then that would mean I have to reread all his books and <laughs> whoa, I'm not ready. If I could sum it up, the Sword of Truth series is what if Twilight, but for men. And I mean that in all the worst ways. Place your bets now what the fanboys have to say about that. Did I just lose track of the video again just to trash a Terry Goodkind book? Yes. But the other reason is I wanted to show a way for you guys to help support the book world during this pandemic. Everything has been affected by this and reading about what's happening to independent bookstores shows that a lot's going to change. And Libby is a great gateway to help just by using the library. Plus it's free. You like free, right? But if you're able, there are options right now to help independent bookshops. Want to buy online? Check out bookshop.com or indiebound.org where every purchase supports your local bookstore. Bookshop actually launched just before all this happened and has raised nearly a million dollars for local bookshops. Love audiobooks? Then check out libro.fm which is like Audible, but for the same price, helps out your local bookstores. I am just repeating myself at this point. Want to help out laid off bookstore workers? Look into the Book Industry Charitable Foundation. And if nothing else, look up your local bookstore and see if you could buy directly from them. Bookshop has a tracker to show all the ones in your area. Links to all these will be in the description and pinned comment below. And yeah, I don't really have a way to close this video. Just stay safe, wash your hands, support your local bookstore, like, comp, no, and if nothing else, at least you know Libby exists. Stay safe, bookworms, and have a nice day.